In this video, we're going to take a look at how you calculate the stress due to bending inside of a beam. If you recall from our previous example, if given this initial setup, we can actually move forward and using the method of sections, we calculated the shear at every single location inside of the beam, as well as the moment at every location inside the beam. However, before we can actually move forward and carry this out, we actually need to know a little bit more about the beam. Specifically, what's its cross-sectional area look like? In this case, this beam has a cross-sectional area that is a rectangle of width B and height H. Furthermore, we also need to know what the coordinate system is that we are working in. In this coordinate system, the x-axis is the longitudinal axis for the beam, with the y-axis running through the height of the beam. The x-axis runs through the centroid of our cross-sectional area. Next, the stress at any location inside of this beam can be calculated according to the flexure formula, which tells us that the normal stress caused due to bending in the x direction is equal to the negative moment in the z direction times y, which would be the distance from the neutral axis, which runs through the centroid, divided by the moment of inertia about the z axis. Thanks to our previous analysis, we know the moment about the z axis at every location inside of this beam and we provide it with the moment diagram. Based on this diagram and the equation, we can see that the maximum stress will occur in the region that we have the maximum moment. And this occurs in this instance, directly at the wall. Furthermore, according to this equation, we know that the maximum stress will also occur simultaneously at the top and bottom of this beam, as that is where the maximum location of the distance from the neutral axis occurs. The value of the maximum stress, which we previously stated is given at the surface, can be calculated by plugging in positive or negative h divided by 2 for the value of y. Furthermore, the moment of inertia about the z-axis can be calculated according to the equation i sub z equals 1 12th bh cubed. Once these values are inserted into our flexure formula, we can further simplify the equation to see that the maximum stress that occurs at the top and bottom surfaces for a beam such as this is plus or minus 6 times the moment at the wall divided by bh squared. Now an important realization to make is that the stress that occurs due to bending is a normal stress and therefore obeys Hooke's law for linear elastic materials. Accordingly, stress equals the modulus of elasticity times strain. One of the reasons why this is important is that strain gauges can be mounted to the surface of a beam on the upper or lower surface. Once that's done, we can then set these equations equal to each other in a way that we can relate the measured surface strain to the moment present within the material at any location.